Alright, so hello and welcome. What you are seeing here is a video from Financial Wisdom, which was recommended to me and I thought it would be interesting to backtest the strategy shown in the video and also challenge it a bit. As always, these videos are not meant to prove someone wrong or know better. I'm just saying the concepts show a technical implementation of a backtest with Python and also give my comments on that. I will quickly go over the main points. The video is linked in the video description. So first of all, this is the strategy. Pretty much straightforward. You buy when the close price of the S&P 500 is crossing above its 200 day moving average. And you sell when the S&P 500 close price is crossing below the 200 day moving average. When I watched this video the first time, at this point as someone who backtested quite a lot of trading strategies, it kind of surprised me and actually made me curious. Or put it in a different way, I basically was this guy. So let me jump to the next part. Going further, he also found that taking a 10 month moving average would be his preferred choice over a 200 day moving average. I will test both of those options later on. Next part, let me jump to that. So financial wisdom was taking a 100 year time horizon and found quite an insane outperformance of the strategy versus the S&P 500 performance. Also, what you see here is that buying and holding the S&P 500 end up with a higher volatility than going with the strategy. Now, I have good and bad news. I cannot duplicate the 100 years backtest with free data. Anyhow, if a trading strategy is working, it should work no matter which part of the time horizon you are picking, as long as the time horizon is long enough. The good news is, I will cover data going from 1985 until today, which is more than enough data and also considered most recent data. All right, let's get started. We need some libraries. Why finance support price data for the S&P 500, pandas for data handling. And as you see, I'm working with the backtesting.py library here. It is important that you have watched at least my introductory video on that library, in the best case also the follow-up video. I won't cover any functionalities of this library in this video here, so I assume that knowledge. First step, getting data for the S&P 500. So using YF download, providing the ticker symbol for the S&P 500, which is caret GSPC. And we are starting the data poll in the beginning of 1985. With that, we're getting a data frame containing open, high, low, close data from 1985 until the last trading day, which is basically today. So this is our data we will feed into our backtest. Before setting up the backtesting class, we define an individual indicator function. So you can also work with um, some technical indicator libraries here. I'm setting up the moving average function on my own. So I'm simply defining SMA here, which is taking some values and also a rolling window. And then I'm simply calculating the simple moving average by returning a series of the values, rolling over it with the rolling window and then take the mean. So if I wanna have my moving average over 200 days or my 200 day moving average, I simply provide the close column here. So this one and take a rolling window of 200. And now you see daily, I have my moving average calculated. All right, and same for the 300 days here. Okay, so I will first start with the 200 day moving average, but also cover the 300 day moving average. So what is the 300 day moving average? That is simply the 10 month moving average. So 10 month, roughly 300 days, should be fine, right? But we're starting with the 200. Okay, so next, setting up the backtesting structure. So I need a class containing my strategy, MA strat for moving average strategy. This inheriting from strategy, which we have imported from the backtesting library. Then we're setting up the indicator or the parameters rather in the init method and simply define simple moving average equals two, then an indicator, and our indicator is our uh, defined function. So we defined that as SMA, provide that, 
and then the data import, which is say, simply save data close, so the close uh, column, and then we have a 200 day window. So this is uh, just the logic of the library explained in the previous videos as well. But just as a recap, you take i for an indicator, provide the, uh, the indicator um, name or rather the function where the indicator is defined and then the inputs of the function, right? So this is just values and this is the window. Okay, next and literally next because in the next method, we are defining the logic of the backtest. The logic of the backtest is pretty much straightforward or not of the backtest, but of the strategy. We are checking whenever the close is crossing above the simple way average. So how can you check that? By using our conveniently imported crossover function. So what is this function basically doing? It's checking if the close is above the simple way average and it wasn't the day or the row before. This is what the function is, is doing. You can also code that for yourself, which I did in many of my previous videos, but it is very convenient to use it. So I'm just taking if crossover and then provide the crossing over line, which is my close. So save data close. And then the line which is being crossed over. So my SMA. Right, so this simply checking is my close larger than my SMA and wasn't the day before. And if that's the case, I want to buy. Now, for the selling part, I simply define the crossover the other way around, right? So if the SMA line is crossing uh, the, it, uh, the close, or so the other way around, right? If the close is crossing below the SMA line, but that would just be this crossover, vice versa, right? So this is why I'm taking the SMA here first and the close as a second, because uh, essentially the SMA line is crossing the close line in that case. And if that's the case, so what is happening here, just to recap, I hope this wasn't uh, confusing. What is this doing? It is simply checking my SMA being above my close price and it wasn't the day or the row before. And if that's the case, I just want to close my position. So entering when the close is above the SMA and wasn't the row or day before and exiting this position when the SMA is above the close and it wasn't the row or day before. That's it. So this is my strategy. And now I can run the backtest with this strategy by simply defining bt call backtest which i've imported from the library here provide the data which is df then my strategy name which is ma stretch so this is simply my strategy class and then i also set an initial cache which is simply 10 grand here done now i can run the backtest and store that in stats using bt run and take a look at what we are getting here. And here you see that the strategy indeed has a very high return over the last, what is it, like 37 years, years or something like that. We have 877% return, that's remarkable. But if you compare that with the buy and hold return, you're getting a quite striking result because this these results are actually kind of contradicting these results, right? Because here we see a different picture. We see that the buy and hold return is extremely outperforming the return of the strategy, right? So this is what I found very interesting, but we also see a confirmation here. And I wanna show you that as well. So we have a volatility of 11.8 four percent of the strategy right this is close to um, the numbers from financial wisdom here so let's find out how volatile the s p was here right so we don't find that here but we can calculate it for ourselves before doing so let's check some more things so we have an exposure time of uh, 20 72 uh, percent sorry uh, equity final we out of uh, 
10 grand we made roughly 100 grand uh, sharp ratio could be interesting for some of you win rate just 28 percent worst trade that's a good sign we only have five percent losses as our worst trade and our best trade is 64 percent here right but anyhow let's find out the volatility of the s p 500 that could be interesting for you as well so how can you do that you're just taking so this is annualized here as you see so we're taking the close and apply the percentage change to get the daily changes then multiply it with 100 to get it at the same scale as here because these are percentages numbers and then we are simply take the standard deviation for the volatility here get this one but as it is annualized we have to multiply it with the square root of the trading days which is roughly 252 trading days because of weekends holidays and stuff like that so then we are taking the square root of that and this is our annualized volatility volatility of the s p 500 which is way above this volatility and is also roughly the same as financial wisdom has calculated okay but anyhow we might get a volatility which is lower but i mean we have a buy and hold return which is nearly three times the return of the strategy so these results are clearly showing a different picture than the video now let's also do that for so these this was the 200 day moving average now let's do that for the 300 day moving average simply changing the value here you can also define that as a variable inside that class of course would be the better way We're running it again and what we are getting here is basically nearly the same results but slightly even worse results here right so slightly less equity final less return so might be even better to take the 200 day moving average let's let's go in the other uh, direction just to double check yeah then we're getting uh, even even worse returns here right so yeah to summarize that for this time horizon including most recent data the strategy is not outperforming the s p 500 here to be fair financial wisdom has used the time when he was out of the position he was investing the cash into a treasury bond this is not covered here but i mean do it in your head so you have 28 percent of the time not invested and invested in treasury bonds i highly doubt that you can get this much return outperformed with a treasury bill right so yeah overall mm, the strategy as said you're getting good returns with the lower volatility but this is not outperforming the s p 500 at least starting in the 80s going until today now what else can be done now the good question is which strategy is outperforming the s p 500 and i personally think and i know that this is not enough so the simple moving average is not enough to uh, to outperform the s p 500 right so the question is which combination of strategies are outperforming the s p 500 i have videos on that but i can do more videos on that what could also be done here is to code the strategy from scratch so not using backtesting libraries but really do it uh, without using those libraries i can also do that depending on your feedback so yeah i hope this was uh, interesting uh, as said i just wanted to backtest that made those observations i think they are a nice add-on to this video um without making it look bad or something like that but yeah i hope this was interesting and uh, you liked it 
in case you did you know what to do and i thank you very much for watching and i look i'm looking forward to seeing the upcoming videos bye bye